Welcome to the O-Scene, I'm Jacqueline Twegg. In Orange County, there's always something to do. Look to your own neighborhood or a surrounding city. Time to check out the people, places, and events taking place on the O-Scene. As the winter chill is being felt throughout parts of the country, not so much here in Southern California. We have a fix for that. And have you wanted to learn to fix a broken appliance or gadget sitting in your garage? We'll take you to a free workshop to show you how. Stay tuned for other recent happenings in Fountain Valley, Huntington Beach, Stanton, and Westminster. Time now to find your warm winter gear and woolly socks because we're taking you to the rink. At Westminster Ice, you can bundle up and have a blast on the rink. It's the place to cool off while learning cool moves, no matter what city you live in. We start uh, with children in classes as young as three and go on through adults. Um, we even teach skaters in their 70s and 80s. I think what makes it special is that we don't really have an ice rink in our city and so we're able to come here and be able to enjoy that and the children will really be able to um, take a look at what it's like to grow up on the East Coast maybe and be able to go on the ice and, and enjoy those things. Things like wearing sweaters, scarves, hats and gloves. More than anything, the feeling of gliding freely. Something that can be accomplished with skates. I know a lot of kids like to skate and not only kids, adults skate too and that's changed my life a lot because my friends help me out on ice and I make friends all different levels. Jolie She shares with us how her daughter Karis found ice skating to be her happy place. She said it's like uh, her as an angel flying and, and it gives her peace in her heart when she skates and the teachers here are amazing they're so nurturing and loving and and where I can trust you know, this facility to bring out the best for my daughter. I like my friends and I like teachers and I like learning new things. I have a lot of new friends that I wouldn't ever meet like outside of ice skating. Some of what we try to teach is not just the skills, we try to teach some life lessons as well about how to work with others, how to share, um, how to deal with um, joy and excitement as well as disappointment. Um, we try to teach more than just the skating. Dina Nguyen has been taking lessons for several years. She's now enjoying figure skating versus traditional ice skating and explains the difference. You correct your posture, you have to make sure you stand up straight instead of like leaning forward and leaning backward and you use a lot of your muscles such as your thighs and your arms so, and your torso so you have to stand straight all the time. Paula Rankin tells us why she enjoys teaching adults. It's a lot of fun for us and for the skaters as well. Um, it's, there's a great deal of joy in helping someone achieve their skating goals. And for Sarah Sherman, who oversees the programs and instructors, she too feels fortunate to do what she does. There was a point in my life where I realized that they were actually going to pay me to teach ice skating. And that was when I realized this is what I wanted to do. I get to come to the ice rink every day and it's absolutely wonderful. If you want to try the sport of skating, Westminster Ice offers skate rentals. You can also check out the classes offered for people of all ages and levels through the city of Fountain Valley. After you learn how to ice skate, you can learn to fix things that have been taking up space and even help out friends with your newfound knowledge. Looking to learn a new skill and save money in the meantime? then you'll want to check out the Fix-It Clinic. Debbie Killey is the organizer who's been putting on these events for the past four years. I am a member of the community and I care a lot about the environment, so I wanted to bring a program to the Huntington Beach that would help keep trash out of landfills and help people repair stuff that they might care about and want to keep in their homes. Huntington Beach Library hosted this free event where dozens upon dozens learn to repair everything from garments to bikes to small appliances. It doesn't need to be thrown away, you don't need a new one. We can just repair it and put it back in service. 
The best things to hear are the stories of people who bring something that's very sentimental, something they really care about that's been in their family for generations and they just want to fix it up. We fixed really old radios from the 30s and the lady was so excited when it was fixed because she was able to listen to it again and had memories. Priscilla Cruz is here in hopes of fixing her 1960s Singer sewing machine and passing it on to her now 26-year-old granddaughter. It's sentimental and I think she'll remember sewing, learning to sew on it. So I could buy her another one, but it's not the same. Cooper Carrasco is one of the coaches who helps with electronics. Yeah, I've just always been interested in fixing my own things, uh, replacing my own hard drives on my computer or anything, so I really just self-taught 100%. Like many of the other people here, I'm really interested in reusing or like preserving the things that we have and not just buying new things because I like to prevent the new waste. There's so much waste comes from throwing a product out and buying a new one when you don't need to. Mark McLean is here to teach his son things don't necessarily have to be discarded if it's not working. So we're trying to just show him, you know, things can get fixed and, you know, that you have to work and use tools to fix things sometimes, and I think it's a good lesson. Hopefully someday he'll be into electronics and other things like I am and try to work with that. And there's a second lesson his son will possibly be learning from this event. He lives in a caring community. We lost all of our uh, own tools in a fire when we moved out to Huntington Beach recently. So we're, I'm pretty thrilled to be able to you know, talk with others and get their expertise and help us use some of the tools to try to help fix some of the stuff that we have. And fix it they did. A vintage game his son will now be able to play with. Debbie's husband and her daughter, Sierra, also volunteer here. Sierra has learned skills that will help her well into adulthood. If a chair breaks, you know, the best glue, or if the bike breaks, you know, like which tire works better, or which brand you need. It doesn't make any sense to do otherwise, because you have enough range. To find out when the next Fix It event takes place, you can visit their website for more information. Since we've saved a few dollars, it's time to spend it and be adventurous when it comes to eating. Okay, so just follow me guys, we're going right around the corner here. In downtown Huntington Beach, you can walk, wine and dine, visiting and trying out six stops along the way. The meetup spot and first place to eat, Longboards. I want to welcome everybody to Walk, Wine and Dine, Huntington Beach's fun, fabulous food tour. Sherry Hardesty, foodie tour guide, also shares Huntington Beach facts in between eating and drinking. But first, time to try the first bite of the day, Jamaican jerk chicken wings. And I'm also a cook at the Honda Center, so I'm a big foodie person, so I'm very picky about my food. The wings are really good and this sauce is very good. After the appetizers, it's across the street to Hurricanes for their signature beverage. They have the most amazing happy hour and Monday night football, you don't want to be anywhere else. Five different rums floated with Gosling's Black Seal Rum and it also has pineapple and orange juice in it. So if you want a rum drink, that's the drink to get. Once drinks are sipped, it's on to the walk part of the tour, including the site of the original jail cells, the surfing museum featuring record-breaking 42-foot-long surfboard, and then exploring a few neighborhood streets. So Matthew Helms opened up the first furniture store in 1904, and it's still there, it's not been touched, and I'm sure little things here and there, so now it's an antique store. Now that diners have walked up an appetite, they head to the next restaurant. What we're going to be tasting is their beautiful ravioli di zucca. And so it's butternut squash ravioli and brown butter and caramelized sage. It was very, very tasty. And the sauce for the bread, the little pesto oil sauce, is very, very good. Highly recommend it. All these people are very nice, and we're having lovely conversations about the food. Yes, it's been very great. Terrific. The foodie tour for me is something new, absolutely, and it's great to, for Huntington Beach to have. She's gone to some fabulous places. So far, that is. The tour continues with a wine stop. So 
Well, this is stop number four, Main Street Wine Company. We've got this the middle table. Wine and dine. Yeah, so come hey. on in. We always come out and tell you about the wines that you're trying. So it's not just, here you go, here's your wines and see you later. It's, hey, here I am, I'm a sommelier. I can tell you about the wines that you're trying and why they're unique or different. So you have your choice of a Cabernet, a Chardonnay, a Pinot Noir. After learning more about wine, next door it's pizza time. Chipotle shrimp barbecue pizza complete with goat cheese and cranberries. After the last bite is eaten, they make their way to Ice Cream Way for dessert. Welcome to the Ice Cream Way where they make ice cream right in front of your eyes. Oh. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Something else that's cool is the newly discovered local spots and tasty bites tried today and sharing fun with new friends. There are two food tours. The lunch one featured Main Street Munchies and a dinner tour, five at five on fifth. Let's head now to the mall, but not necessarily to shop, instead to appreciate local artists and their work. Westminster Mall, the place to shop and at this event meet artists, see their artwork and maybe purchase a piece or two. The idea behind Westminster's Art Walk is to promote local artists from those starting out to others accomplished in their career. We have quite a few different mediums going on today. We have oil painting, watercolor, even a body art demonstration, which is where the artist takes a human body and uses it as a canvas. A dozen artists featuring unique creations, some festive, and others bright with vibrant colors throughout, including a live painting demonstration. It makes it a lot more interesting, selling art just when you just see a picture, like especially now that people buy online so much, it makes it difficult. So when they get to actually interact with the artist, it makes it a lot more fun you know, for the buyer and for the artist. Another fun live demonstration taking place, body art painting. I use acrylic as, as a medium. It's just like, you know, to see like environment. And like, I always love to draw like on 3D canvas. That's like something different from just like flat canvas, you know, like it just like give you like a different experience. Mia Kawamura says she doesn't plan out her designs beforehand. I don't think before I draw, like I don't do any sketches before I start it. Like I, I always do like whatever I feel like on the moment, on the person. A few booths away, students ranging from elementary to college age have their work on display. There's mixed media there. You have graphite, marker, uh, scratch board, watercolor. Um, so it's a, it's a wide range of materials that the kids get exposed to in the classroom, which is awesome for them. Something else great taking place? It's great exposure for them and lets them see other artists in our own community. So it's kind of fun to walk up and down the aisles here and see like all the other artists that are in our community that otherwise we may not know about. I feel like sometimes the community doesn't know what we do at all and, and you know there's so much talent and the kids work so hard their efforts every day and, and skill building and, and their um, devotion to the subject is really exciting and to be able to get out here in the community and share that and show what our, our young kids are you know what they're doing it's just amazing. There's also live bands playing to shoppers in the mall, showcasing musical rather than artistic talent. Also at the mall, a paint class showing how to compose a snowman step by step. Leave room for a hat and then trace your circle for your face. In this case, people can go home with their own creation and maybe discover a hidden talent. 
This is the first time the Westminster Chamber has put on Art Walk at Westminster Mall. Look out for more Chamber events in the near future. Now to Stanton, where businesses are being brought front and center, recognized for serving the city. It's great to see so many businesses and collaborative members here today uh, for our annual Business Appreciation Luncheon. The 8th Annual Business Awards Luncheon in Stanton brought out big and small businesses. Please give a round of applause to Global Law Centers and Civic Minds Recruitment. Family businesses. This award goes to Red Ball Hardware. Green businesses. This year's recipient is CRNR Incorporated. And more to hear the latest from so city leaders. Kudos to you guys for being successful and showing that Stanton is a great business partner. Business is the core foundation of our organization. You see, we get sales tax from each and every single one of these entities. So bringing in 323 of them in one year alone for a city that's only 3.1 square miles is phenomenal. I mean, we have a business plan and it's working. We're retaining business and we're actually seeing more businesses come to our city, which is great. You know, we're trending up, sales tax measures are phenomenal and it allows us to build parks, allows us to fund police, allows us to fund fire, and also after school, after school activities for the kids. With a packed room, hundreds turned out for this awards luncheon. It's nice to see familiar faces as well as new faces. Remember, you and your business are the lifeblood of our community. The thing that impressed me the most as I looked, looked out into the crowd is the fact that we had you know, the largest crowd we've ever had, over 215 businesses represented. It shows that not only does the city care about businesses, but the businesses care about the city. And I think the relationship that we built with them is, was shown today by what a great turnout that we had. The city recognized those deserving awards in 11 categories. Scott Harrison of Scott Harrison Plumbing and Heating wins Business of the Year. It just makes you feel more, even closer as a part of the community. Um, I, I was a chamber president for like five years. I really try to give back and not just take from wherever I am. Uh, we're, we're heavy proponents of recycling. I have my own cardboard bin. We recycle electronics. Uh, we will haul away people's old electronics from their, their uh, homes for no charge. Park Avenue wins Restaurant of the Year. No surprise, this year's recipient, Park Avenue. David Slay, the chef and managing partner, is proud of this recognition. Oh, it's a great honor. I mean, I've been doing this a long time and I don't take any of it for granted. Every day is a new day because I have someone walk in the door today that it wasn't here in 2005 when we opened and they deserve the same feeling, same honor that the people got back then. And it's, it's a great honor and it always will be. Awards are special and it's, it's that other people acknowledge the hard work that you do. Connect Staffing President and owner Sima Johnson started her company six years ago. I never dreamed of my thought of opening this company and being able to work with my children and being in the city of Stanton and it's been so great and just seeing Stanton recognize us as a family owned business and being myself and my two daughters. Um, it's our home, it's where we want to be, it's where we'll always have a spot no matter where we go. Council member Carol Warren is pleased with the direction of progress and growth coming to the city. One of the goals of the City Council of Stanton is to become a destination city and not a pass-through city. So that's why we're looking forward to the new business, the new restaurants coming into Stanton, the new entertainment areas. We have Adventure City, which is one of the best amusement parks for little kids there is. So we have a lot of things like that. In addition, the mayor shares some businesses that got their start in Stanton. The gentleman that makes ice rinks for the National Hockey League. In fact, not only does he make them for them, but whenever they have an exhibit or a show like at uh, a park in New York City or Dodger Stadium, he makes them for them too. So we have some uh, young businesses, but we also have some old businesses. And then we also have Vista Paints first store it was in Stanton, and as you know now, Vista Paint is worldwide. In all, Stanton is proud of those who helped shape the foundation of what makes their city special. And that concludes our wonderful program. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>